people who lived here in Canada and in Peterborough before us and still live here to this day before we can start our video. So that's going to be first. I first wanted to recognize that we respectfully acknowledge that we are on the treaty and traditional territory of the Michisage in Anishinaabeg. We offer our gratitude to the first peoples for their care and teachings about our earth. May we honor these teachings. Hi kids and welcome back to video two of our eco-adventure summer camp. So this is obviously video two, and today you chose arts and crafts sprinkles. So today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make your own homemade drip irrigation system. So what is a drip irrigation system? I'm gonna put some photos up to the side of what big factories use when they're watering their plants and what farmers use, but how we can make a smaller version. If, if any of you watched that old movie, Arthur, I feel like that's maybe a little too old for some of you, but I'll put some pictures in here. He created his own drip irrigation system there too, so... In honor of Echo Adventure Week and talking about plants and earth, we're going to be growing our own plants today. So I'll put a list of all the things you're going to need off to the side and we can get started. Hi kids and welcome to the first craft corner with sprinkles. So before we start, I'm going to show you my basic crafting toolkit. This is just generic stuff that you should have with you or just can have on hand because I won't put them in the supply list, but they're just things that I use pretty much every single time for crafts. So. The first thing in my bin is some scissors, some clear sticky tape, I also have some clear glue, but regular glue works too, and a glue stick, and then I have a ruler, some paintbrushes, quite a few paintbrushes, I have an X-Acto knife, but if you're going to have one, you ask an adult for help, some markers, a pencil, and a pen. So now on to our craft. The key components of this include tape, cardboard, large popsicle sticks, and some other stuff that I'll talk about later. The first cardboard cutout you're going to need is a round cardboard cutout larger than the size of your cup, so mine was roughly 6 inches in diameter. Next, you're going to need two big pieces of cardboard, two long pieces, about 1 inch by 11 inches, and this is just to act as additional support for your stand. Then you're going to need some large popsicle sticks. You can use large popsicle sticks, you can use sticks, you can use more cardboard, whatever works, but you're just going to use them as legs. So you're going to see here me putting them through the round cardboard base, adjusting so that it's level, and then placing the cup on top. Basically what you want to do is you want to elevate your cup off of the table or whatever base you're going to be working on so that the water will naturally flow down with gravity. You just want your cup elevated off of the table so that the water will flow through the tube down using gravity. You can, you, you can do this by creating a little stand like I did, or you can elevate your cup on a couple books or another box. I'm just creating a little stand so that I can move my craft wherever I'd like. Once this is there, you're going to take one of those long pieces of cardboard and you're going to tape it to the two feet across from each other. This is going to create a little stand and it'll just add some additional support to your base. Next you're going to need some plumbing tubing or you can use straws or what other sort of tubes that you have. I got this for two dollars at Home Depot. It was super cheap and didn't cost a lot of money so it's easy to get. I also found something very similar at the dollar store so whatever you have. 
Next, I'm going to be cutting out a couple of these little tabs you can see over on the left hand side, and I've just hole punched them with a single hole punch. My tube is small enough that it'll fit in with a one hole punch, but you can adjust as necessary depending on what you use. Straws will only need one hole punch. You just need something to be able to hold the pipe in place. I made three here, but I ended up using five, I think, so you can make adjustments and add as many as you need based on how big your system is and how many plants you make. Speaking of plants, now on to the plant part of our homemade irrigation system. So I have three little pots here because I'm going to be planting basil, chives, and parsley. And I'm first going to start by adding soil to the little pots about three-fourths of the way and then digging a little hole and placing the seeds inside. I only added a little bit of water on top just to start the facilitation for growth, but once I've done that, I won't need to water them by hand anymore because the system will do it for me. I also, at this point, adjusted and put some recycled containers underneath so that it wouldn't leak onto the table. This is essential. My pots have holes in the bottoms, and it's also good for draining out excess water so that your plants don't flood. The last thing you're going to do for now is cut a length of tube that will reach from your cup all the way to the last pot. You can make as many pots as you want. You can only have one. You can have two or three or eight. This system can be applicable to as many little cups as you want. You just need to have longer tubing and a bigger cup of water. As you can see, I'm stringing on the little tabs and these are going to attach to the pots to help hold the tubing in place. I'm also attaching a larger tab underneath the cup to hold the straw in the cup so that it won't come flinging out because obviously this tube was still kind of curled up so it had a tendency to move by itself. This does take a little bit of adjusting and finagling but once you have a system that you think works for you, you can tape the little tabs to your little pots to hold the tubing in place. What you are looking for is to have the tube cut just across the center of your pot. This is where the water is going to drip down into your seed, so you want it to be right above it and not along the side so that it doesn't leak down the side and completely miss your seeds. This did take a little bit of fidgeting and moving around, but finally I got it. Now to seal off the ends, this is kind of the tricky part, so I would ask an adult for help with this. So first I took a little push pin that I had in my house and I pushed a bunch of holes along the top of the tube on top of each of the pots. I ended up adding more later because it needed more and you can continue to adjust and add more holes as you see necessary. To seal off the tube, what you wanna do, if you have an extra syringe around, you can use it to suck the water down the end of the tube. I just sucked it in as if it was a straw and that worked just as fine. Make sure if you're gonna be putting your mouth on anything that it's a clean tube. This was brand new and I sterilized it so it was completely good to use. <laughs> to seal it, this is, I ran into a couple problems sealing it but the method that worked best for me was using hot glue. Once the water traveled through edge of the cup and was coming down the other side, I'll point to it on the screen so you can see, once it hit there the water would naturally flow by itself so I just sealed the end with a hot glue gun. Water might leak out as you're trying to do that. That's okay. It's not going to do any damage. Just make sure you have some paper towel handy to clean it up. Once it's completely sealed, you have a complete irrigation system. So the water, the pressure of the water coming out of the little holes will force more water through the tubing out down the pipe down to your plants and if the water stops flowing you can add more holes I've added a bunch more later and there you go the only thing you need to do now with your cup is add more water if it starts to get down but other than that your plant should be able to grow perfectly I'm keeping mine in a sunny area on a tray that's plastic so in case anything leaks it has somewhere to go and I ended up planting parsley chives and basil, so I'll keep you posted throughout the summer if they start to grow. If you make your own version of our drip irrigation system, we'd love to see your picture, so post them on Facebook, send us a quick email, so we can see all of your lovely creations. Atlas and I are enjoying making these videos for you, and we hope that you are enjoying watching them. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to email us, and we'll get back to you right away. This week, just a reminder, there will be no Zoom meeting, 
as it is the Canada Day Wednesday. Have a wonderful Canada Day. But next week we'll be back on our Zoom meeting. I think next week there is an altered Zoom day, but I'll leave all that information in the description and you can also find it on our Facebook. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching our second video. We're on our way. It's The ball has officially started rolling. So if you have anything you'd like us to know, please shoot us a DM. Bye. Thank you.